we were all very adamant that it was going to be main small, seminar-based, with maybe 10 majors. And that's, that's what we thought. And the program began with the notion of a basic course on sort of evolution that Colin Pittendrig was going to teach. And before we know it, this small seminar thing, uh, Pitt was teaching to a, absolutely a whole auditorium full of students. He was just marvelous at it. And that made the thing big at the very start. I have to confess, in the first days of human bio, I really think most people got up and did their thing. I mean, everybody has some favorite lectures. Mm -hmm. And we all did our favorite lectures. And they, they, it's a little magical that they, they blended together as well as they did. The part that Don Kennedy and I taught, the, he, he went first. He was from 9 to 10, and I was from 10 to 11. So uh, Don was an absolutely marvelous lecturer. And so I went to those, and I said, oh, my God. So, but I found his lectures wonderful to take off from. I would say one of the really sparkling parts of the star was without it being forced, but essentially being forced to listen to each other. Uh, and because uh, we were not listeners, so we were talkers. And so we did listen to each other and we found it mutually stimulating to uh, listen to some of my colleagues. I mean, Sandy Dordmush and I have known each other since we were at the Behavioral Science Center in 1961. Uh, we were both assistant professors then. Uh, be that as it may. So I think this being forced to listen to each other uh, and getting kind of swept up in the, in the uh, wonderful spirit of the thing. Uh, so my teaching in the program was essentially playing that role in the core because uh, I was busy making believe I was an administrator then. So I didn't really have an awful lot of time for seminar work or work of that sort. But I did get to know a bunch of undergraduate students. There was something wonderfully self-directed about the program, and the students kind of recruited themselves into it. We did not work at recruiting students. One of the things when I have had an occasional student come wanting to sign up for a graduate course that I had taught as an undergraduate, I said, do you think I've got some other secrets that I've been saving out to tell? <laughs> I said, no. <laughs> if you listen the first time, that's it. We used to talk that we were not going to become a pre-med program, but there clearly were a lot of pre-meds involved in this. Heck, this was a better introduction to, to medicine than a lot of medicine courses. Your teaching of undergraduates always does not assume that they're interested. But you know, there are some, I'm sure there are some seminars in my department that the graduate students don't look upon as being any fun. Uh, they look upon as something that they have to do. The human bio students really never, never did that. There probably were some courses in human bio that were of that ilk and they just didn't survive. The, um... There is a certain survival of the fittest quality to human bio. I mean, I, I'm not sure that an observer coming independently to watch some of the early classes and one of the present classes would see any much carryover. Unanimity on the part of the majority was crucial.
What's your real first name? Eric. Eric. Okay. This is Eric sitting down here. We're going to make him our subject. If Eric is up against this un unanimous majority, it doesn't seem to make a difference whether it was 8 to 1 or 3 to 1. However, if in the 8 to 1 situation, we give Eric one friend, which we can by contrivance, and I instruct the third subject to call B. That one friend <coughs> cuts conformity response on the part of Eric and his other subjects in half. If I use an old philosophy of science term, I think the program has become a little more reductionistic in its approach to things. Uh, a little less the condition response and a little more the neurochemistry of behavior. I think that's a feeling I have as the way it's changed. Well, no, yeah, I, I see it in general as keeping us well anchored to behavior rather than trying to reduce everything to some molecular explanation. I see the human bio is in that, although there are occasions where our reductionistic tendencies overwhelm us. I I've always seen human bio as sort of in the in the right in the right boat on that one. Item one departments are still not for human bio. <laughs> I don't think any of the involved departments are. So that there's always the if you will, the, the threat of Departments pulling back the people that are active in the program. Uh, I think they have not been, well, I'm not sure how much involvement we have out of the School of Medicine anymore. We have a lot. There are? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Well, it's a chance for them to teach undergraduates. But we have not... I'm talking about a, a worry I have about the program. We've not developed a real system for recruiting juniors in, mainly because uh, they, they had to be somebody before they came in the program.